in and over his pool to keep these masks on the last set. I've noticed that our president, when he has to address, he takes it off. And I'm standing far enough from you so that we can do this. But today we're going to focus on this question. Does love transform? Does love transform? As you heard in today's gospel lesson, the Pharisees try to test Jesus. But really their aim is to discredit Jesus by asking if it is lawful for a man to divorce his wife. Now you need to be aware that a woman was not allowed to divorce her husband. And all the man had to do to divorce his wife in the public space and turn around, turn around five times. I divorced you and it was accomplished. I want you to hear that. But a woman could not go in a public space and turn around five times and say, I'm divorcing that guy. But if you notice, Jesus shifts the discussion from divorce to marriage because Jesus knew that marriage was mainly a contract. It was a legal arrangement and love had nothing to do with it. Jesus also knew by shifting this discussion from divorce and marriage that women and children were treated as property, just as herds and flocks were. Again, love was absent, and so was any consideration of God's desire for neutrality in marriage. So when he utters, and I've preached on this before, because it's been so misused. Now, I want you to hear this. Jesus says, therefore, what God has joined together. I want you to hear that. What God has joined together, not the legal arrangements or the contracts, so that you are betrothed at birth and for dynastic and political and economic forces, you are betrothed to someone at birth. Therefore, what God has joined together, not the legal arrangements, let no one put asunder. And you may have experienced, and I may have experienced as a pastor, that some marriages certainly are not joined together by God. So the question raised, in the popular song, where is the love? Remember that? Where is the love that you've given me? Where is the love is for our consideration today? And I must share with you that I'm indebted for some of my reflections this morning to Bishop Michael Curry. Bishop Michael Curry is the presiding bishop of the Episcopalian Church who delivered the sermon at the marriage of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. I got a number of calls. Are you related? I said, no. Are you related? And so Michael said, um, no. He doesn't look anything like Curry's. <laughs> Steph Curry does. <laughs> Steph Curry does, but he doesn't. And I said, that's a bit unfair. I said, you know, he, he's paternal. I said, Michael Curry, I said, we don't know what, what his mother was like, and she said, I don't want to. <laughs> but when Bishop Michael Curry delivered this sermon at the marriage of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, he said this, imagine governments and nations where love is the way. Unselfish sacrificial, redemptive. When love is the way, poverty will become history. 
And we do well to recall this morning that Christianity is a movement. Christianity is a movement. And it is a movement grounded in the unconditional love of God for the whole world. It is a movement mandating people not to get vaccines, which has been such controversy, but it's a movement mandating people to live that love, and in so doing, to change not only their lives, but the very life of the world. Bishop Curry also spoke at this wedding about the power of love and faith. Love is the only way. There is power in love. Don't underestimate it. Don't over sentimentalize it. There's power in love. And to drive home the point, we're told think about a time when you first fell in love. There is power in love, not just the romantic forms, but in any forms of love. The certain sense in which you know you are loved, and you know it, and when you love, you show it. It feels right. There's something right about it. There is a reason for it. The reason, though, has to do with the source. We are made by a power of love, and I'm not talking about our physical parents. We are made by a power of love. Our lives were meant and are meant to be lived in that love. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Because ultimately, the source of love is God, the source of all our lives. And the old poem caps it quite well when it says, where true love is found, where true love is found, God himself is there. There's power and love, dear friends, to help. There's power and love to heal when nothing else can. There's power and love to show us the way to live. And so the bishop is so on point with the description of what the world could be like if love had its way. Imagine our homes and families when love is the way. Imagine our neighborhoods and communities where love is the way. Imagine governments and nations where love is the way. Imagine business and communities when love is the way. Imagine this tired old world when love is the way. You know, I'm selfish. Sacrificial. And we use that word sacrificial, some people swear that you're cursing them. Unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive. When love is the way, no child will go to bed hungry in this world ever again. The passage from Amos that the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King cited so often, let justice roll down like a mighty stream and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. We are reminded when love is the way, poverty will become history. When love is the way, the earth will be a sanctuary. When love is the way, as the old Negro spiritual says, when love is the way, we will lay down our swords and shields, down, down by the riverside to study war no more. 
when love is the way, as another spiritual says, there's plenty, there's plenty, plenty good room, plenty good room for all of God's children. Because when love is the way, we actually treat each other well. We actually treat each other like we're actually family. When love is the way, we know that God is the source of us all, and we are all brothers and sisters, children of God. So the question, does love transform? Does love transform? My daily prayer is this, that we all pray daily for the transforming power of love to have its fullest manifestations in church and society and to have its fullest manifestation in our hearts that indeed is power in love and let us pray for it each and every day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.